different than the other. So let me stop there. Let me take any questions that you have, concerns, ideas are always very, very positive. Um, I can answer anything you want to go. Yes. Oh, Kevin. Oh, I'm sorry. What we're going to do is we're going to have the mic down and we have a speaker here for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who wants to grab the mic then? You want to take it with people? Thank you for coming, Richard Holcraft. Uh, I don't understand this. Uh, they contend that if we were to uh, not raise our debt limit, mm -hmm. that we would subject ourselves to default. Uh, the, the income tax line you've got there, the tax line, mm -hmm. is clearly more than we pay in interest. interest. Why would we be subject to default? Um, there's two opinions on this. There's one that says the Treasury, Geithner, has the ability to prioritize. Now the way that government works their cash is day to day. So they got to have enough cash in to be able to go through. A debt limit is your credit card, okay? And we hit, we hit our limit on that. So they want more to be able to control. We've got 1.5 going forward. Geithner argues that he does not. Geithner says that if we were, and we've already hit our limit, meaning right now what they're doing is they're managing money that's coming in. you got the federal government, if you're an employee, you get to, uh, you get to invest in what is called a thrift saving plan. When you take your 401k, well, they're not investing that money right now. They're using that money for cash flow purposes. And they say they can go to August 2nd. He says he does not have a legal opinion to do this. And he says that if he gets 70% of all money in, but there's 100% of bills, he does not have the power to prioritize. That he cannot pay the bondholders first, that he can't go in and then pay Social Security, that he has to pay nobody. So you can end in a big fight, but nothing will be paid for a long time. And we've gone through that. In. Now, you can let him prioritize for a while, even if you say that he had that power. But think about it. If you're running $1.5 trillion debt, there comes a point that you do hit that. Now, say, say he doesn't pay anybody and you're in that legal fight. Today, what is, the, what is Greece having to pay for their bonds. If you buy a bond in Greece, 23%. So ours is very, very low right now. So if we got into that argument, and he's the, he's the Secretary of Treasurer, and he did not send them out, he did not make that payment, what happened? The market will not wait until it gets to the Supreme Court. The buyers will not wait. So we will hit a hard, a hard debt limit very quickly. I mean, he says to August 2nd, I actually think the markets can turn beforehand if they see that politics just goes through its normal way that people are dancing around. Um, so it's done. Yes. Uh, Michael. The, the uh, money that we... My name is Mike Barcato. Um The money that is owed to the United States, we have money that's owed to us that we went to like Mexico and other countries, correct? Mm hmm has that money been paid back? And if it hasn't been paid back, what is Congress and everybody doing about getting it paid back? If I owe taxes, they come and get me. Yeah. <laughs> no, th there are a lot of places that what America has done in the past, we haven't been ones that lend. We more grant. We more give these long term. And you also have to think, if, if we lent a country money and it was terms, it's like you buy a house. Bank loans me money for 30 years. A bank gets in trouble, but does the bank have the power to come in 10 years and say, I need a lump sum? We don't have the power, because from the same point, if we called in ours, why wouldn't they call in theirs? And the only advantage would be, we owe a lot more than people owe to us. So that makes it very, very difficult. So I don't know that that's a, but I, from the premise of your question though, why aren't we as a government looking where we're spending too much. You know? I think right now, federal government, how many cars, how many cell phones, how many other things can you, you know, maybe they're small, but start pulling them in. Will you start focusing, take this opportunity. Look, I view, it, I view it in a mindset like this, you know? 
Um, I don't have a poli sci degree, and I'm not an attorney. You know, I, I, I got out of BHS, and I didn't have the grades for a scholarship. My folks didn't have the money to send me to college. My folks were all, my folks were all Democrats. My whole family were Democrats. But I became a Republican I in elementary school, and I watched Jimmy Carter put a sweater on and tell me my best days in this country were behind me, and I had to turn my heater down. And I watched this other guy stand up at a podium and say, no, no, don't fly those pastel colors. You fly the bold colors. I don't know either person, but I said, I'm going with that guy. Because he wanted to go to the shiny city on the hill, and I knew that was America. And I'm falling in. I got out of high school. I went to Bakersfield College. I took a job as a seasonal firefighter from Kern County Fire Department. I go cut the weeds. I take my money. I go to LA's car auction. I buy cars and I bring them back and I sell them. Now, we had this initiative where we just passed the lottery. So on the second day the lottery started, I stopped at Food Town Market. I lived up on the east side of town and I bought a ticket. And I won the lottery on the second day. All right? So I'm 19 years old. I just got $5,000. Now I can do one or two things. I could have become Charlie Sheen and doing the biggest party on campus. <laughs> so I took my money, I pretty much invested it all in the stock market. I first gave my brother and sister a hundred bucks and I took my whole family out to dinner. To the, it was the red line at the time. It was the best, I, we'd never been there for dinner before and we went there and I still remember everybody in my family ordered, ordered the steak Diane, you know. <laughs> but I did okay. Then I went and I decided at the end of the semester I wasn't going to go back to school. So I went out to start my own business. I remember I went down to San Joaquin Bank, gave him my business plan, the guy just looked at me. Well, that's okay. So I took my money out of the market, refinanced the current car, and my uncle owned these uh, yogurt shops, McCarthy's Yogurts. So out of Steining Plans, I opened a deli. And the food critic came in, compared to me, did me pretty, did pretty well. But it taught me a lot of lessons. You know, I still remember early in the morning, Judy and I were dating at the time, and I think she quit on me three times. Time. We, you have to go in early. I mean, you're small business, it's 24 hours a day. So we're in there cutting all the food up early. And there's a knock at the door. And it's a little pickup truck from the city. And I'm thinking, I bet they want to give me the key to the city. You know? <laughs> How many young guys have a business? So I go up there, he wants to give me a ticket for my sign that says it's past seven days. I'm thinking, let me understand this right. That sign tells people to come in here, buy more sandwiches, buy more sales tax, it pays your salary, and you want to punish me for that. Now, but all those things I learned in my small business stays with me today. It's what I believe. I went back, sold my business, now I had enough money to pay my way through college, as long as I went to Cal State Bakersfield. So I go there, I open up the newspaper, the California says become a summer intern in Washington, D.C. with our local congressman, Bill Thomas. I think, how lucky it'd be to have me, right? So I quickly apply, and he turns me down. So I go back to him, I don't know him, I said, you don't have to pay me, I don't have to go to D.C. Just let me cut papers for free. I just want to learn. So he did, and that's how I got involved in politics. That's how I met Larry. Larry cleaned our offices, and I was my job. I worked late at night, and so that's what I finished my undergrad, went back on my MBA. But when I debate this president, one, I know Mrs. Joe is wondering how I ever got into the White House, so am I, but or I ever got out of third grade. But when I'm debating this president, I don't think he's giving me political rhetoric. I think he believes what he believes. But remember, we all believe what we believe from our own experiences. Now, if you watch what he's done in his life, he's been a community organizer, he's with the unions, he also was an attorney. But there's a thread that goes through all three of those occupations. They're all redistributors of wealth. They've never created wealth. So I don't know that he quite understands. He thinks the world's un unfair, so he tries to level it out. But he's not understanding. If you punish wealth, you get less of it. If you reward government assistance, you get more of it. Now, we live in a state and we always are very proud that California is ahead of other states or countries, we'd say. But we're ahead of them in the debt problem. You know, the census came out. There's 37 million people that live in the state. That equates to 12% of the nation's population. Do you know what the percent of the nation's welfare population lives in our state? 32%. Texas has 5 to 6% of the nation's population, about 2% of the nation's welfare population. We get 25% of the entire budget in Sacramento from 144,000 people out of 37 million. So if you punish wealth creation, you're going to get less of it, they're going to leave. If you reward government assistance, you're going to get more of it. Other questions? Oh, I apologize. I thought I would have questions. I kept talking. I apologize. Go ahead. Yes. I'll, I'll shut up. Okay, well, I'll try not to get out of soapbox. Um, uh, thank you for coming. My name is Kitty Birch-Told. 
I have a question. Sure. First of all, I think we have an administration who doesn't have America the way we all know it in, in our best interest. I think they really want to change the whole way America operates. Secondly, you do realize that they're regulating around Congress. You have, you're losing your power as a congressman yeah. because EPA and these other agencies are regulating. They're not saying it's illegal, they're just making it so hard you can't do anything. Thirdly, why are we in wars all over the world and why hasn't Congress forced the administration to get out of Libya? We are past that limit. That's my main question. Two great questions. And let me take let me take the first one on regulation, because you're right. <coughs> Regulations is holding us back. Today in America, corporations have more cash on hand than they've had in the last 50 years. But we have unemployment that we haven't had since, since the Depression. The reason they have so much cash is because of the uncertainty. They don't know what holds next. So we produce this little bill. It's not the end all, but it's the beginning. Because I've always come from the premise, look, if I'm digging a hole, stop digging first, right? So we have this bill called the RAINS Act. The RAIN Act simply says this. Agencies enact a lot of this regulation. When an agency has a regulation to enact, they actually go out and score how much will that cost the business. If it reaches the threshold of $100 million to cost the overall business in America, it's called a major ruling, okay? So when I first started, I put this in the place, when I first started looking at this, I wondered, how many major rulings out there? There's more than 100 pending in the climate that we are. So Congress has a bill, and we're going to run it through. It's been going through the committee. Jeff Davis from Kentucky has it. That no agency can enact a major ruling without a vote of Congress. Because it's exactly what you're saying. They're taking our power, but you should have a check and balance. If it's a worthy regulation, it'll get voted out. If it's not, and that will take away some uncertainty. Um, your second question about the wars. You're right. Libya. Who are we actually defending in Libya? Do you know? Who, who? We have no idea. Now, the War Powers Act gives the president the, the power to act. He has to notify us within 48 hours. And then he has to come back to Congress in 60 days. So he just sent a little note over to us. For the 60 days, you're supposed to come back and justify it. Well, before we left, we took a vote. And we sent a clear message to the president. One, that he didn't do any of that. Two, we said we want all the communicate to where he's going, and he has to answer in the short amount of time, or no go. Now, Kucinich had another one, another one out that said, get you out in two weeks. I voted against that only from this purpose. <coughs> two weeks, we're there with NATO. Can you draw down that fast? I, I don't think that's a reasonable conversation. When I first went to Congress, the biggest vote I made came to Iraq. And we were already in Iraq, we were already in Afghanistan, and they came in there, and it was not going well. No one would agree that it was going well at the time. And the president had a different... President Bush came before us, even changing the strategy in Iraq to the surge, we voted on that. This president has taken us in, we have no idea... Take this for instance. If they get Gaddafi, what happens to that country? It's in civil war. And are we responsible for rebuilding another place? No. And if that's our premise of why we went in, why are we in Syria today then? Why are we in Yemen? Exactly. We will be everywhere. We cannot do that. And I think Congress has the power, and you have to have that discussion, and you have to go through the same. Well, Two very good questions. Yeah. Let's, go the, let's go this side, yes. What was the reference on that vote you just mentioned that you started sending with? We, we had two votes up. Boehner had a resolution up. That, that stipulated the president did not make the cause of Libya, and then we asked for, from a legal perspective, any communications of why the discussion was made, and we gave the president a short timeline to come present to us the just cause why he should, because he's never done that. Do you have the reference numbers for those votes? Oh, off the top of my, no, I apologize, just because everything's, I can get, I'll get that for you though. Ben, we, we'll, we'll make sure. I'll get both of those. There were two resolutions, House resolutions. Um, the Boehner one passed. The Kucinich vote didn't pass. Kucinich was, cl cl Kucinich was just get out of Libya in 15 days. A lot of Republicans did still vote for that. Larry? Uh, okay. Larry Hallam? Yes. Uh, formerly of Arvin. Uh, Taught there. And great education.